Just the Sabbath that I spent before I leave, we had a study on a wonderful theme, the wonders in the Bible. So many treasures in the Bible was shared with us. Defining, finding the verses, how many, length and depth and breadth, which need to be known. And the same scripture which came to us for the purpose today, we will find out how the world is trying to use and abuse. Although God's thoughts are infinitely higher than ours, he took the initiative to reveal himself to us so we can experience salvation. God revealed himself to us in many ways. In time of Moses, it's a kind of oral instruction. He could hear God saying him to do and to write, to direct. That's what we read in Numbers 12, 6, and 7. It was a close encounter with God, mouth to mouth. And still God continued using a method to communicate with his children, different ages. But the God's communication continued. Our senior brother opened the scripture and explained the origin and also how this came into the hands of people. The original versions, the translated versions, and how it is being in our hand today. And when we come into connection with this, and we also found some of those things that there is no controversy with one was rather despite of the fact that over 40 authors or the penman had written this over the spread of 1600 years and Christ endorsed the Old Testament was inspiration and continue with this the New Testament the same but the devil had always a kind of things when he knew that man understands and he knows how to immune to anything that can infiltrate, and he applied a different strategy. You remember sometimes back when I brought a kind of study when the church is strong, how devil brings five different weapons to destroy the church? Exactly the same way when the church is strong in a scriptural basis. He understands the Bible. Many places the Bible reading course is there. Sometimes they distribute a small pamphlet which says that how to read the Bible in one year. Many people read the Bible. But we should study the Bible, not read the Bible. <laughs> And many people have the Bible. Sometimes you go to some houses, they have the many different versions of the Bible. Some people even have the product of telling that I have all the versions of the Bible. Good. It is wonderful to have all the versions, but it is better to read at least one version of the Bible. Read it for yourself. As we read in the scripture here, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And the devil knows this, that if a man would know the Bible very well, and he can be standing so firm, and the devil's purpose will be defeated. So he must play a strategic role in destroying the aim and object of the reader. If he studies, he wants to put a confusion. <laughs> you remember the words of Jesus when he talked to the lawyer, what is written, how readest thou? 
In the book of Luke, chapter 10, we read the story. And this is what happened. He tried to put in the mind of the people how to read and how to interpret. In all the words, in the meanings even, I was just trying to comprehend some of those language transformation from age to age. When I just had been looking into at least one word for illustration, let me bring. When you were young, when you turned to the dictionary to read the word cool, what did you understand? It tells you the stage of the temperature, the state of the condition of the atmosphere or maybe body. And today, if you have to define cool, it's cool, right? <laughs> it's a different meaning altogether. And if you don't have the new dictionary, and you would understand differently the word that is expressed. Today, a cool can be cool, but by then, a cool is a cool in a different concept. It's the same way all the words and terms and terminologies, even some of the words and terms and terminology which had never changed, even devil tried to use and twist. So I call this as a scripture twisting. Let us find some of the scripture twisting right from the beginning until today. I want to take you to some of the history from the time of Luther, and let's come down a little bit down to the ages today. For the centuries, the teaching of the Christian church were a mixture of the scripture and tradition. Right? God always made a providence that his scriptures should continue despite of all those attempts the devil makes, that it must continue without any damage. And devil try to do all kinds of damage is being caused. Now, when this scripture was supposed to continue its original way, there had been traditional introduction there is also the ecclesiastic authority which tried to put something in between or maybe hid when the scripture was in the darkness, when the tradition was in overpowering with everything. God used a man with the name Martin Luther in Germany. He is one of our examples. He found A very serious implication, one of the serious abusing of the tradition which came into the church. What was that particular period? There was one serious thing was there. I read from one of those verses here, as Martin Luther writes himself. As soon as the coin in the coffer rings, the soul from purgatory springs. It's a sale of indulgence. There are many other things which came in. Whatever the church says, that was carried. Nobody read, nobody cautioned, nobody could, even if they would. So this gave a kind of thought-provoking thing for this reformer, which prompted him to write this 95 objection a basis of 95 objection to the church door in Wittenberg. He read the Bible. He studied the Bible. He understood the traditions were overlapping and overpowering and leading the people, let me say, they mis misleading the people in a wrong direction. So what happened to this? This ignited the spark that flame, the Reformation, and put a direct confrontation with papacy and popular authority. He stood firm with the two great convictions. One, he believed, he understood, he was convinced that salvation was by faith in Christ. Amen. There is nothing could shake him. He definitely know that the salvation was by faith in Christ alone. 
And then he got the scriptures or the only standard for Christian's faith and behavior. There is nothing else. No ecclesiastic authority comes. No changes. No man-made policy or creed which could change the scripture. Now let's say after he made this, well, do you think that the devil would be happy? And he tried all his best to stand on this. He was unmoved despite of all attack from the church, on all his inmates even. He was unmoved and he stood firm on the principle as a reformer, a strong reformer. Now, Comes. Let me go further down to a story. Luther, when he continues his reformation, and the Satan also plays his strategy. Every time God puts one and the devil puts another one exactly identical, or maybe come to confuse some kind of some kind of isotopes he tried to bring in. That it looks identical. And that you are misguided very easily. When the people know that the scripture is so much important, and they have to evolve it certain things. Now here comes Luther made an attempt to use one of the educated scholars with the name Thomas Munze. In those days, anybody who need to be in an ecclesiastic position need to be a kind of a light people. But he was a very simple man from a kind of uh, uh, the peasant's family. But he was educated. And he appointed, Martin Luther appointed him to be one of the pastors of the Protestant churches. While pastoring the churches, this man developed a doctrine which doctrine was called the doctrine of inner light. This is a kind of strange doctrine. This doctrine which tells us that this is also called as the doctrine of inner light or the re continued revelation of the Holy Spirit. And this man tried to explain in his doctrine this way, that the Holy Spirit, he, he writes this way, that every individual will be having a continual expression of the Holy Spirit, that he would be guided and he would be doing all those things. He does not have to worry about any other thing that he would uh, read or do whatever it is. He should be guided as he would be guided by the ex ecclesiastic dream or visions. A kind of the name he makes it. He would be guided by a dream that he calls it as ecclesiastic dream or a vision. You don't have to worry about anyone's teaching. So this way, he even criticized Luther. Look, the Luther only pointed him to be the pastor. And he now comes with a new idea of the doctrine of inner light and the continued revelation of Holy Spirit through the ecclesiastic dream and visions. Now he criticized Luther. And then he brought also soon let into a fanaticism. And that also is called as a peasant's revolt in the history of the Reformation. And Luther reacted to this. He denounced this fanatical moment and he said, to them, the Holy Scripture were but a dead letter, and they all began to cry, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. They don't understand the meaning of the Holy Spirit. It's just a dead letter. They did not understand what is the Holy, Script, uh, Holy Spirit and the Holy Scriptures even. They dealt, dwelt on their dreams of their own. And how devil tried to twist. If the people tried to read the scripture, 
he wants to use some other methods to trouble and disturb the people. So that their attention will be diverted, and then he would be busy destroying others. He never left even Christ. Do you remember sometimes the experience of Christ when he was tempting Christ, the second temptation, what he did? He quoted scripture as it is written. He also attempted to destroy scripture with scripture, not with anything else. Sometimes he brings external force, sometimes from within, with the scripture to scripture, but only with the mild, a minute twisting to his favor. And he remember that when he said, as it is written, and he was trying to quote Psalm 91, 11, and 12. He was quoting correctly, but with the wrong intention, the wrong concept, out of context he was trying to. He made him to understand whatever he would do, and the angels will come and hold him, or whatever we do, and we would be protected. It's a kind of a blanket statement he was trying to give. And let us understand how he tried to bring this in. He took it out of context. He tried to misuse or abuse and try to destroy even Christ. It's possible today he would use the same thing, scripture with scripture. And if he comes with something else, if he comes with the Quran, he may not listen. If he comes with Gita, I may not listen. I know what is Gita. And so I may not listen. If somebody else, maybe Brother Jang, if he comes with something else, and he, he may understand the, the doctrine of Zoroastrianism, he may not listen to that. But if it comes with scripture, it's easy for him, a convincing way. And he is a debater, he is an orator, and he can speak. He can bring in very easily. Gospel Worker, page 306. There's a warning. Gospel Worker, page 306. Beware how you follow impulse, calling it Holy Spirit. Some are in danger of doing this. The word of God urges us to be sound in faith, able to give to everyone who asks a reason to the hope that is in us. We will continue with the stories of the Reformation. There comes a little bit later, after the early reformers, comes the Advent moment. Even there, when the awakening came, and the first angel message came, the second angel came, and the third angel's message came, and the people were full of zeal. They need the necessity of receiving the Holy Spirit. They were full of spiritual awakening. So now the devil knows that now he is losing the battle. Therefore, he makes another strategy. He tried to use different people. Let us find out at least one or two or three, the Advent moment people whom devil tried to use. And then how God was able to be the controller of the situation. This happened in the year 1860. There was an young evangelist. His name was Moses and he was a powerful preacher and a debater. During that period of time, the religious debate was a kind of fashion, a practice. Until today, if you go to some countries, especially the country that I just returned from, Philippines, you will see everywhere the religious debate, organized debate, both within our church, other church, any church. The religious debate. And those period of time, in 1860s, this was a trend. So this man, the Moses Hill, he was a young man, energetic, a professional debater. He always had an organized debate. So he agreed to make a debate with another man with the name W.F. Jamison. He was a spiritualist. He wanted to prove that he could debate and prove that the Advent moment was correct 
and the Sabbath is biblical, and he wanted to establish the scriptural fact on all these things. They debated. During the lecture, something worked. He had a dangerous attempt. When he tried to debate, during the debate, he came under the influence of an evil spirit, whom he called Downing. And soon he felt, I read from the court, and soon he felt, as he expressed it, that he was growing out of Advent cloth and getting on higher ground. He went to defend the truth. He went to defend the Advent movement. Now what happened to him? He said that he is overgrowing out of his Advent cloth and getting on a higher ground. Before too long, he left the Advent ministry and rejected the full authority of the scripture and become spiritualist. He was a minister, an elder. He had the spirit of prophecy warns you about him. From a vision that is Sister Whitehead, she wants here, the elder Hill, that he was standing on the brink of the awful gulf, that if he took one more step, it would be final and his eternal destiny would be, uh, eternal destiny would be fixed. He, she knew that he was moving a dangerous move. Despite of the warning, he went and he lost that which he gained. And not only that, he just continued. Already had evil angels telegraphed to Saturn's agent upon the earth that Brother Hill would soon leave the Seventh Adventist and join the ranks and the spiritualist medium with whom he discussed must be all gentleness and charm him and fascinate him. He was almost continually in the company of the spiritualist medium. And Saturn, exalted at the conquest he made. He not only destroyed the simple people, he could destroy even the bigger one. We cannot make a dangerous move. Sometimes some young people say that they go to save the people from the other group, other churches. And the result we know, they could never save, whether they are mingled, they are lost in the ocean. Never should visit a place where error is taught, as we read in early writings. And that will contaminate one and would bring the destruction to our soul even. You remember the story of the disciples? When the disciples came, returned with their experience with the so many saved and 71. And then he said, when they expressed their success to Jesus, what Jesus wants, hey, don't be so sure. And be happy because the power of God is with you. Because of that, the success came. Otherwise, they could have been lost themselves. And they could have been subjected to very danger. So my brethren, the devil knows where to bring in the confusion. And today's period is the period of eating year. Sometimes the confusion comes for listening to certain things and curiosity. We know in America you have the saying, curiosity killed the cat. Mm -hmm. It's definitely. Yeah. And there is another story of another minister. His name is, yes, yes, Davis. He was also a powerful preacher. He was also a wonderful minister. And he thought he had a kind of fascination towards another kind of spirit. So let's say the Pentecostal spirit is that we have the truth, they have the spirit. If you combine this two, we will have a wonderful ministry. You see his recipe? 
We have the truth, they have the spirit. Let us put together and let us make a kind of a new recipe. Soon, we know the story. He started using all kind of instrument, all kind of things, including the drums and all kind of emotional thing. It's a kind of what we call today as a charismatic move. He made all those stuff. Finally, he had found himself in a derailing position. Then he came with an explanation for the Holy Spirit. When the people had a kind of emotional expression, moved by these charismatic movements, what happened? Those who fainted, Holy, uh, let, let me read that, what exactly happened, what he writes here. The people shouted, prayed for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And when falling, prostrated, were surrounded by more singing and shouting. And those who fainted and revived were said to have passed through the garden experience and were born sons and daughters of God. They were ready for translation, for now they could no longer sin. It's a very dangerous thing. Furthermore, those who did not have this experience were only adopted children of God. They would have to die and go to heaven through the underground railroad. He brings a kind of new ideas. Brethren, it's not an ordinary people, educated people. <laughs> Those who know the scripture, as we just read that we in the Sabbath school lesson, just educated, overeducated sometimes. And they try to use their human wisdom and try to interpret and to explain for emotions and their emotions and their thoughts and ideas and ideologies. And as we read, we may not reach that situation as... Let's go further down to the experience, go back to the time of Jesus. Let's read one portion from Matthew, chapter 23, verse 15. <clears throat> Matthew, chapter 23, verse 15. to use scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you can pass seas and land to make one prostyle. When he is made, you make him twofold more than the child of the hell than yourself. It's a kind of warning he tried to give. So just kind of people here, just a kind of people here who try to interpret the things and bring the people for themselves. Today, we see here in this country where this country which was born out of truth is it today, sorry to mention that they lose more and more the spiritual ground. More and more the spiritual ground. More churches with less attendance. But soon after September 11, did you see? Most of the churches have no place inside the church and outside the church. All the parking lots were filled because people were afraid of death. I just remember an, an illustration of um, some, I think one of our ministers here used, I think. There was a man who visited one of the churches where they had a kind of, a, what they call an exhibition, spiritual and well, a religious exhibition. When he went to one stall, there was a caption at the entrance of the stall, and say, what will you be when you cross this? Then when the person who looked into that, there was a capsule with a mirror. 
And when he looked into that, he saw his mirror right on that as if he was in the coffin. And he was terrified, what would you be if you would be there? And many people see and they're afraid of their life after death. Many people think that the Christianity means something after the death. And we should see that Christianity when we're still alive. And many people are just like some of the Samaritan people or maybe the soldiers or whomever. Is, they're afraid of the storm. And as soon as the storm comes, their ship is wrecked. They pride. As soon as the storm is stopped, they continue with their own doing. And many people are just uh, the same way. The Christmas Christians and the Easter Christians, and that's all, twice in a year. Whereas we read in the scripture, there were our prophets, our patriarchs had been having the very serious prayer life. And if the prayer life of the people here today is going to be twice a year, do you eat only twice a year? That's a dangerous thing if you would do that. My brethren, here, Jesus condemned the Pharisees because they converted. What happened is that they converted people. They were, what happened to the convert? They were making the converts when they brought it. They were twice the children of devil than they were. Because they brought in and they fed them with their own ideas instead of what is in the scripture. And many times today, the same thing happened very much in this country even. And so many denominations. I was just looking through how many churches are in this country. I found several thousand churches have their headquarters here. And so many doctrines, so many ideas, so many theological things come in. And the people were so confused where and how to go on. And many bring to their person themselves instead of bringing them to Christ. And they brought in the spirit of prophecy, says that, just commenting on this text here, he said, they brought the sins of the Pharisees, what they were bringing people to Judaism rather than God. This is why they were twice to the devil than more than they were before. They brought, but they brought not to Christ, but to Judaism. Now today, are we bringing the people to Christ or to ourselves? There's still the same danger could be existing today. Am I bringing the people to myself? Or am I bringing the people to denomination? Many people ask what denomination belongs. I say I don't belong to any denomination. <laughs> there is nothing as a denomination. And we should belong to Christ, and we should bring people to Christ. Amen. Like in, in addition to undermine, there's a one more. Let me just uh, quickly go into another very prominent one. If he cannot s succeed in all kind of these things, he brings one more. This is exactly the same thing happening even today. You know the story of Dr. John Harvey Cullock? He's a he, is a, he was a very powerful man with a medical talent. It took only 20 years for him to turn the Western Health Reform Institute to make it into an international institution of health. With 1,000 employees, with just 20 years, he made a simple institution to be a very large mammoth institution with 1,000 employees. A simple county institution to be an international institution. And the success went into his head. Well, he was a man of prayer also. He was not just a, like, just a street man, not a rogue. He was a very powerful man. And his experience goes that Calic was a generous and a man of prayer. Before each operation, he would pray with his surgical team. He gave all his fees either to sanitarium or to other Adventist institution. Often he would perform surgery on charity patients without charges. Was he a bad man? No. He was a very good man. 
Over the years, however, Calvary became so enormed with the healing, restorative power of human bodies, he began to believe that God was inside every person. What is happening to him? He now sways and his thought and his understanding from God as a person, from there to sway to God in a person. You just bring here him. He believes that God was inside of every person. Indeed, he believed God was inside every living thing. God, he said, was not behind nature, nor above nature. These beliefs began to border on spiritualism. When he propagated this thought, there was another man with the name W.S. Spicer who worked in India. After his name, even there is also an institution called Spicer. And then he said, hey, wait a minute, what are you preaching? He said that it's from Hinduism. He talk about the Hinduism, not Christianity. And we know the story of him. Then he has to, his religious experience took him away from the original platform that he had. So brethren, the devil can use simple people. The devil can use a strong, powerful people. God wants us to stand on the platform of truth. And today, there is another thing comes as a new age. Many things come in with a little bit of godness, with a different flavors, pantheism, reincarnation, moral relativism, and finally, there is one thing coming today, is a therapeutic touch. It's a kind of, I think, many things come in. And the spirit of prophecy warns against all these things. When period of time when they did not know too much about the magnetism, she also mentioned about this magnetotrophy and how it is dangerous and all those things. It's alarming things. People try to bring a new theology, new ideas, interpretation of the scripture, twisting. If all these things fail, we bring something else. That something else is what you can call it the Samaritan religion. You know, you know the religion of Samaritan? You know, if you, I think for the want of time, maybe when you go home, you can read the story that you find in 2 King chapter 17. You can read the whole thing, verses 24 to 41. It tells a complete account of this. Here, just an outline of the story. What happened is, when... Uh, Following the conquest of the nation of Assyria, most of the people of Israel were deported Assyria. Then the king brought the people from different nations. And there comes all the things what happens to them in the story. Let me just summarize that. At least they had religion. They feared God, but a different kind of fear. Their religion was a religion of fear. The fear was like the fear for a lion. We read that also. They said that, oh, they just come and tell that they were not afraid. They were afraid just because of the lion came. Just like the soldiers in the ocean when the tempest come. The sailors in the ocean when the tempest come. They were afraid. They have, it's not a fear. As we say, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear, it is also kind of uh, impulse that the Hinduism gives. They are also God-fearing. The people even remove their sandals and shoes and they worship anywhere. They say that if you don't do that, God will pull out your eyes. And you will have the leprosy. And you will be born as a dog. You will be born as a cat and mosquitoes. Okay, I don't think Brother Joe will be ever dreaming to be born as a mosquito. Never at all. And this was the fear that they made them to obey and the fear of God. That is something different. This was the kind of things. If you are so strong in that, 
and they will try to bring the perverted things. And then, then still strong, and he's trying to bring also something else, and they want to put also the fear in a different, the wrong way of things. And then he could also bring something else. He can also bring not only the wrong kind of fear, he could also bring a religion of form, a formal religion without substance. Just a kind of legalistic. Do mechanically. Just Friday comes, Sabbath begins. Saturday close, Sabbath ends. Mechanical. Just like the needle of the watch moves. It should be, it's a dangerous thing too. Without reasoning, without understanding, without obedience. And if you do that, that will be also a dangerous thing. You could bring in the, the, the former religion without substance too. That could destroy the church even. And we should be aware of all these things, brethren. And what the spirit of prophecy says us, and then he could also, what the spirit of prophecy says about that kind of religion, is the former religion, a feeble faith, does not correspond to the truth we profess. It demands, it demands living energy and fervency of the spirit. Science of Time, Perfect 24, 1888. Again, it says that in Review and Herald, February 11, a formal religion is powerless. Only the religion of heart, intense and earnest, will move upon the heart of the callous and world loving. We should not have the formal religion which is powerless. Then the finally he could bring a kind of the religion of compromise. What is the compromising? What is the term of compromise? Okay, you don't bother me, I don't bother you. Right? It's a kind of give and take. And most of the time take then give. Kind of adaptation to whatever is outside without immunity. immunity. When I went to, just I, when I was in Singapore and transit, they let all the passengers pass through uh, closer. And I was wondering why was that? They wanted us to stay there for one full minute. I was wondering what they were disinfecting us. <laughs> and they asked us to pass through a kind of carpet. We must pass through that. We cannot go away from that. They want to disinfect, remove every bacteria or germs, whatever would be fear of SARS. When he came back, they did the same thing. And they were disinfecting. Yes, we wouldn't know. And I was a little bit confused what this disease could be. And I've never heard one, never seen one person. And the symptoms that they wrote and the re after result of that, oh, that was terrifying. I said, and my, I must have the mask. And I thought that, but the Lord protected. Amen. <laughs> because they, the, the way they mentioned the list of things, what will happen, this, this, this. And I thought that that's going to be terrible. And then I cannot carry the contaminated things here. When I landed here, the people may not know what kind of disease is that. So when we are not immune, if we are going to have a kind of compromising religion, and we are going to be in a danger, we cannot be 50-50 of the world and the, the church. How long we shall be shuttling between two opinions? God wants us to be strong Christians. The devil knows how to twist the scripture, how to infiltrate the thoughts. He can destroy the simple man, he can also destroy the eloquent man. He can also destroy the new members. He can also destroy the old, mature, senior, most ministers too. Amen. And he can destroy anyone, learned man and a simple man. We should pray that the Lord would help us the power to recognize all these things, that we can stand firm from the, the games of the scripture-twisting people. May God help us that he would give us energy, strength, and immunity. Amen. We thank you for this beautiful hour of worship. 
We thank you for the words that we received. Help us, Heavenly Father, to be immune with all the deceptive plans and strategy of the adversary. We pray thou would continue helping each one of us who are bowing their heads before thee, Heavenly Father. Bless also the family who are represented here. And bless also those who are unable to be present here today. Those who are sick and suffering be also blessed. Thou would bless thy work and workers and thy ministry and ministers around the world. We pray thee, Heavenly Father, thou would help us that we may not be taken away by the twisting power of the Satan. We pray that thou would give us the power from above to withstand all this calling a strategy. Forgive our sins and start comings. We also pray for our visitors where thou would continue helping them in all their needs. According to their need, thou would supply them. Amen. Thou would give them the spiritual power from above. We pray thou would also bless those who are in the valley of desert and help them to understand more about thee. Help us also to draw more closer to the Heavenly Father. Accept our praying, our supplication. Forgive our sins and our shortcomings. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.